This is uh, section HSE, Homogeneous System of Equations, C21. And a homogeneous system of equations is just one where the solution vector is zero. So basically when you build the matrix for it, the augmented matrix, the final column will all be zeros. And of course, homogeneous systems are easy to recognize because all of their solutions are, or not their solutions, all of their right-hand sides, all of their sums are zero. Okay, so first step is to write the augmented matrix for this. So this one is one, four, three, negative one, zero. Uh, one, negative one, one, two, zero. Four, one, six, five, zero. And you'll notice that the augmented matrix always final column is all zeros for a homogeneous system. Okay, well, we're going to sound like a broken record here. We now need the reduced row echelon form in order to determine what the solutions are to this system. And it's no different for a homogeneous system. You might think that it being homogeneous is going to mess things up, but uh, not at all. Even though we won't really be producing uh, solutions or answers over here, we'll still end up with relationships between the variables. Uh, of course, we tend not to get pivots in every column because if that were the case, we'd end up with, uh, with, with problems. Each one of them, each variable would all be a zero. There's nothing wrong with a system having uh, zero for all of its variables as its solution, but uh, that isn't unique to homogeneous systems, so don't expect there to be too many zeros. Okay, well, once we put this guy through RF, here's what we get. So one, zero seven-fifths, seven-fifths, and zero. Zero, one, two-fifths, negative three-fifths, and zero. And then the last line is all zeros. Now you might think a line of all zeros is disaster, but it's not. After all, there's no pivot point here, which means all this tells me is any variables that don't have explicit relationships uh, basically, this frees it up so that the variables that don't have explicit relationships get a free pass. Because this equation is always true, which means we can choose anything for the variables not specified, and they will make the, this equation true. So this adds no limitations. It sort of opens the door. So if we look at it, we've got pivot rows in 1 and 2, which means 1 and 2 will be our dependent variables. They're going to be dependent upon 3 and 4. I can actually choose anything for three and anything for four because uh, the final equation guarantees that any choices for three and four make the last equation true. And with appropriate choices of one and two, I can make any value of three and four work in equations one and two also. So that is in essence what I get to do here. There are many solutions to the system, I can tell that because r is equal to 2, where n is equal to 4. But because I don't have a pivot in the last column, there isn't no solution. So that means there's many solutions. And in order to start specifying them, I can uh, just sort of assign things. So I'm going to say that x3 is equal to a, and x4 is equal to b, where they can be any number. So a and b are just uh, elements of the real number set, or I guess we're using the complex number set. Later on, we'll see that our, our matrices, our systems can certainly have complex solutions. But uh, x1 and x2 are going to have limitations on them. So let's write their equations. x1 is going to have to be equal to, well, once I bring these guys over to the other side, it's going to be negative 7 fifths times the sum of a and b. So a plus b. And then finally, x2 is similarly defined. It's going to be uh, 3 fifths of b minus 2 fifths of a. And then that's it. That's my solution. So when I say the solution to the system, it's going to be the ordered uh, quad of uh, negative 7 fifths of a plus b That'll be my x1 uh, coordinate. x2 is going to be 3 fifths b minus 2 fifths a. 
And then finally, uh, x3 is a and x4 is b. And all that's such that a and b are both elements of the complex number set. And there it is, that's my complete solution set. I could also write it as a vertical vector using these same components, but uh, you know, I always prefer to write them this way, or if I'm gonna write it as a vector, I would write it as a horizontal vector. Uh, the book makes a big deal about vertical vectors always being the only appropriate way to write a vector. Uh, but for, I guess from my physics background, I always write vectors as horizontal, and I view them as interchangeable. So while I may be breaking some rules, uh, uh, a solution set written as a set, written as a vector, or either horizontally or vertically, it's all the same in my book.